I reckon it's probably time to get the library sorted out in here, get the granary in the library finished in no particular order. But look at how quickly some of these things are buildable now. So maybe another another worker or I think we'll just go granary library. Or maybe we could just Because the worker's gonna take one turn. How much it? production can I get if I if I just do a settler? Oh no, three turns. Let's see if maybe maybe I should just do this one more settler. Um how long it would take? Four turns. Okay, let's just take a guy a couple of guys off food. Uh Three turns, three turns for settler. Okay, fine. Pretty good. Well, well, well. I could have could have let it groan again, but I'm just thinking what other there is another tile I could work here if I wait a turn. Ah. Uh, but but then you would go from three turns to two turns, and you could have just built it in three turns. Yeah. I'm gonna run the archer up there just to scout out this area that I want to expand to, and then I'm gonna start. So you're gonna want trapping, I guess, because you've got two deer up there. Okay. Um, trapping, yeah, that's true. Philosophy. Actually, I can't really... Look at the, my happiness. I can't really build another city yet because my happiness isn't high enough. Once I hook this up... Once you, yeah, once you've got the silver. That actually which might we, be okay. You'll have it by the time you get there. This guy... This city is growing. Okay, so the reason I have these cities on production focus and I try to not... Because I, I, it's because I don't really want them to grow. <laughs> There's right. not a lot of value in having your your expansions grow too much, uh, because they start sucking up the happiness that you want from people in your pot, okay. in your main cap. Like if I if I did grow this city to six, suddenly I'd be unhappy. Right. And that wouldn't be that's not a good thing. I don't really want to start draining the the, the golden age progression. So it's if you can see that you're about to go unhappy. The best thing to do is, first growing, of all, you can actually press avoid it. growth in your expansions to, to, to physically stop them growing. Oh, okay, so, so even if you've got food tiles, that's not going to do anything. I can actually do this here, because otherwise it would have grown next turn. Right. And, and do I really want it to? No. Not particularly. So I can actually stop that. And this one's deliberately avoiding so itself. So it's, it's, it's a good idea to stop growth if you're about to go unhappy, because unhappiness is worth... This is a micromanagement type a thing, lot. rather than a big worry. Like... If you start going unhappy, like you're going to go unhappy all the time, where the barbarians plunder you or whatever, you can't really avoid it. Right. It's just going to happen. So don't panic if you go unhappy for a turn or two. It's fine. Um, you just it's just something that you can't can't you can't deal with. Um, but usually, like you know, I've got so much faith coming in. What I'm actually going to do here is actually assign this faith to, to um, automatically pagoda. purchase pagodas in case I forget. Because I can't, I might, next turn, I might then. forget. And then you get three happiness. I, I actually do know that it's going to happen. So yeah, suddenly I'm going to get a lot of happiness. So yeah. maybe I can just let these guys grow. Because how long is this going to take? Uh, three turns. All right. Cool. Well, let's just leave it like this for now. Um, all right. More policies. Oh, this is actually gives me more, unha more happiness. So no, you've got I'm five out, happiness. Five. So I wow. can run this guy out. It wants me to settle here. I think the one to the right of it's better. Which, but I guess it does wipe out a tundra tile. Well, that doesn't get the whale, the whale, does it? One, two. Do you have the tech to get the whale? Yeah, fishing. Yeah. Is it fishing you need? Yeah. No. Oh. Why would it? Why would it do that? Why would it stop you from getting the whale? I don't think it's very smart, Duncan. So a pagoda was purchased. Good. That's put me up to five. Yeah. So that's going well. That's going nicely. This is all going fantastically well now. This is like the ramp up part yeah. of the game. So, so but this is a scary part because if someone's going military at this point, you are uh, you're very at risk. It's not really like if someone. It, well, let's have a look at the military. I'm still at the bottom. Yeah, so I'm. So someone's, I'm got, someone's got twenty six thousand. But look at the turn. It's turn fifty five. Yeah. You know, most people are starting to think about. You know, most people in the Civ games. I was starting to think about, do I even want to build an expansion? Like, maybe Sweden have thought, okay, Timbuktu looks really tasty. Maybe I should be attacking it. And if they choose to do that, then I'm, I'm going to see it on the demographics. Oh, maybe. Um, they're cert I'm certainly in a bad place if they decide I mean, to it, do that. I mean, is it worth just building another archer, just placing it in on that bottleneck just to scare them a little bit? I think, I think even with nothing here... Even with no defences, this is still okay. It's a scary city to attack, that one. They're going to have to come around here. Yeah, I'd never want to attack One by one, that. 
and I'm going to be shelling them every turn yeah. with a strong city. And they got with... to walk, walk through hills, which slows them down. I mean, it's terrific. It's going to be a real challenge to take this city. Yeah. Even it'll be a challenge to take this city. You know, even if this guy, but I know this guy isn't because he's just expanded. He's not going to, you know, suddenly have three military units here. I, I really feel quite comfortable. And I've still got a bit of gold saved up. It's not the end of the world. I think I probably should build a military unit. It doesn't hurt to, you know. Another archer can't hurt, yeah. Um, or a spearman. Let's build there. So maybe maybe it's time to like move my archer back a little bit. And look, you can build like an archer in your capital in one turn. So. Uh, so okay, that's done. At this point, I'd probably just set it on automatic because yeah. I, I don't really care about any of these tiles particularly, and we'll just I just see what it does. I am going to actually just get it to build a pasture, because I might as well uh, do a bit of, bit of min-max. Let's set that up there. The worst thing that will happen on automatic is that it would send your worker like across the whole world to have a tile that you don't care about yet. Okay. So let's get these libraries up now. So the first first things first, as soon as I'm, I'm done with my put, put my fourth city down, I should have got a library up. I went Hanging Gardens instead, which has delayed my National College a bit. But I feel like... Well, no, because your capital will still build a library first before you get it on the other ones. And you can't build the National College until it's on all the cities, can you? <laughs> it's fucking Zulu's telling me to not settle here because <laughs> they've claimed it. <laughs> We're about, we've just been denounced by the Zulus. <laughs> Goddamn Zulus. So maybe you have to think about that in terms of a multiplayer game where someone's pissed off because you maybe... You a city next to your capital. But maybe maybe one of these <laughs> cities has pissed off those guys. Right. You know, and that can happen in these multiplayer games. Yeah, so I've yeah. got my first caravan. I'm going to send food back. Talking about trade routes, I don't like this. No? I'm giving them two science and two gold per turn. Why the fuck would I ever do that in a multiplayer game I when I could give myself point. four food? That is free food, by the way. That food does not come out of this but city. I guess it, or you know, like in that. some ways, it's it gives them a reason not to uh, declare war because they'll lose all that gold they're getting from you. Well, you say that, but no one ever thinks of so that. So, when your sieve, uh, when your sieve runs out of, of choices, by the way, here, yeah, um, it won't. It you have to reset it again. So I just did that. Oh, okay. I'm building pagodas here instead of maybe maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I should be. And I don't really quite know here what the best thing to do is. Um, what do you think you should save for another another great profit? Great and profit. Get that. Yeah, get that set up that, again. Like it's possible. But as you said, the pagodas are like only worth it if you buy them near the beginning. Yeah. Um, what have I got here? Get an archer. It's only one turn. I'm not going to get an archer no. So okay, <laughs> I don't actually know what to build here. Um, again, maybe a bit of wonder spamming wouldn't hurt. Uh, do these guys still want the Temple of Artemis? Yeah, they do. And having a, an allied city-state would give me a bit of a buffer mm. here. At least it would mean that they couldn't necessarily attack easily through me. Um, why not? Let's build... The, actually, no, what was it? The Artemis they wanted. Yeah, yeah. Artemis is actually better than uh, Fertility Rights because Fertility Rights does the excess food... And my excess food is currently like, 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 but it's the same wording. How does that? How do you know it? No, no, no. It's not. This is growth as opposed to like whatever other. It just no. That's what it says on fertility rates. It doesn't say ten percent growth. I'm sure it does. No, it says ten percent something else. Ah. It's not. It's really not. It's not even here. Oh, I don't find that. I'm the only one with the religion still, which is surprising. <laughs> um, well, it is only turn sixty. All right. There's my philosophy. So, so you don't want to go for the um, oracles straight away then? Now that you've got that. Um, well, I could switch out to oracle. Oracle's okay, but I'm honestly like, where am I going to put the policy? Oh, I'm already going to have extra policies I don't particularly want. I guess in anything other than rationalism, I want tradition and I want rationalism. Anything else here is wasting my time. Really, is wasting my time because every policy gets more and more expensive. You get there's a limited amount of policies you're going to be able to have in this game. But it's a free one. It may be. Uh, well, I don't know if it is, though, because sometimes they still count. Oh. I think Oracle might be free. But where would I put it that's any good? You I don't finish know. off the tradition tree, didn't you? Maybe I could put a bit in Piety. I don't know. If, who knows? Um, Piety's not much good, though, honestly. Oh, it's, you know, there's, there's one in the city-state which increases their resting point, which is pretty good. Let's get Bronze Worker. I still haven't got that. Disaster. Why haven't I got that? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Where's any, I? Any iron? Yeah, they've got it. Wow. Oh, there's some next to your capital. That's nice. Uh, maybe good. I should have revealed this sooner. 
because iron's a great production tile to work. Mm. Um, just finish that farm. And uh, I think probably about now is the time to build that road I've been waiting for for ages. So let's do that. Um, choose a search. So obviously I feel like I'm reaching the, the what I would call the mid-game now. Right. And this is as far as I really wanted to go in this kind of tutorial thing. Um, I, I, think, I think I will carry on just to get the National College, but you can see where I am now. Yeah. I'm building libraries in all three. Okay, this will be done in 13 turns, which is a bit of a long time. I didn't put it on production focus, which is not ideal. Maybe what I'll do is I'll send up my um, worker from here to get this turned into a, a production. Oh, yeah, got never iron. And, um, nice. So it turned out that this wasn't a bad place. I need to remember to build a fishing boat in here to hook up that luxury, a work boat, um, and send that up around the coast. That will obviously get me an extra three happiness. Yeah. But it won't be long before I get another pagoda in here. Um, which is only a couple of turns away. So the plan really for this game, which I might come back to, we'll see, uh, I'll just save it quickly here, is to to carry on into the mid game with a strong start, Yeah. right? Many people don't have this. They don't have this quick four cities, national college, secured right. your so area. So like, at this point, I would probably have national college, but I'd only have like one or two cities. Well, this is, a, it's, I think and it's- I'd be, getting, I'd be getting higher science than you. I think it's a mistake. Because what you might have found was that this guy might have expanded here. And yeah. this guy might have expanded here. And then suddenly you're stuck in a pickle. Yeah. Okay. The first thing you should understand is that if you've done this early game build, this sets you up for the mid game. And right. you have to make a decision now. Okay. In the mid game, you have to make a decision. And the decision is, can I win this game with the lands that I have got? Right. It's a, I think I, I, someone else, one of the other Civ players said that. But basically, you have to say... Can I sit on these four cities comfortably, defend them, and win from here? Do I need anything else? If I was on three cities, like just imagine it was just these three cities here, yeah. okay, and not not anything else, that would not be enough to win me a game, right? I would need a fourth city, yeah. and so I would I would think, right, what do I need? Can I, is this city good enough? What would I do? Would I burn it? Would I take it? How would I act? The same thing with this city. What would I do? Would I? Is this city good? It's got a resource that I don't have. It's good. Let's take it. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's a, that's quite an easy decision to make because it's not like really going to piss anyone else that much. That is true. but And it's not too hard to take these things either. Yeah. A couple of longbows or a couple of crossbows, it does involve going down these techs. And I only just got bronze working. I don't even have composite bowmen yet. Now, other players probably won't have attacked me. But even if they did, I probably wouldn't have been able to defend myself. Again, I think you have to see what the game is like. I haven't done really enough scouting, but that's because I've been very selfish with this start. I think this start has been very, I am, I'm not scared of you. This is optimal. Uh, maybe this person said, hey, the Seven Declaration of Friendship, or yeah. hey, I'm sending you a trade route. I would know this is safe. And, yeah, and you know? fair, they're playing Sweden. They're probably going to be out for friendship. Who's, who, you know, it depends if you know these players and you know what they're like, yeah. then you can play accordingly. In this case, I knew Sweden probably wasn't going to attack me. This guy, I couldn't even see him. I went f not too far, but far enough. I haven't even met that six state. Maybe I should have done. Um, I've been a little bit sort of, maybe, uh, maybe I should have been pushing out a bit more and exploring a bit more than I have been doing. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we don't do enough of at all in our games is explore. Like, honestly, I should have explored this area. This is crazy of me not to have done. Um, but, you know, I, I've I've been focusing on what I've been focusing on. And you can only focus on so much when you have 70 or 80 seconds to, to do stuff and chat and be funny and whatever. Um, obviously, it's a political game in multiplayer. You want to make sure that you're not, like, an easy target or you haven't got... I mean, this is a juicy target. It's got a national wonder in it and people will want this. Um, there's a lot more to talk about, actually, with this stuff. And so I think what we can do is we can go straight on to something else from here. But what I really want to say is this is the point, this is the time in the game when you think, right, where am I going to go now? Am I going to start building military units? Am I going to change my focus over? Or what am I going to do? Obviously, you do want to get through to education and acoustics eventually. Yeah. It looks like it's going to take a flipping long time to get there. So it's going to speed everything up a lot. But And that's sort of what happens in Civ. It's very much a snowball-based game. Okay. We will talk about mid-game decisions um, next time. Uh, in the next video, because I think that that is where you you take your existing empire and you you decide how you're going to win, how you're going to snowball into a win, and what you need to do to win that. 
And there are certain elements that you need to do. You need to protect your borders. You need to build some ships to, to protect from being nuked in the late game or being <laughs> attacked by the, from the sea. Um, also, these ships can help defend these cities. If this city becomes under attack, frigates can defend it just as effectively as m- melee units can. So they serve a dual role. If this, if this is a risk, this plane here because it's a straight march to the capital, we need to do something about it. Yeah. We need to shore this up or get Put rid of it entirely. Or as well. you know? And we have to pay attention. Getting a citadel isn't as easy as you think. There's no real easy way to do it without a lot of war. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't do it. Equally... If you're at war with a city-state, will, they, will you get one or not? Um, I think so, yeah, actually. You probably will, but it, it's one of these things that you tend to get instead of another great person. Yeah. And, and you want your scientists. I'm not sure how great people how work. Close are, you, are you anywhere close to getting anything? I had to think I have any. because the, the, I, I mean, this doesn't actually give great people points. So I haven't actually got anything that generates them at the moment. That's, a good thing, that's one of the good things about the great libraries. It gives you early points. Oh, what's this? A mud pyramid mosque. So that must be a temple, oh, yeah. I guess. Right. So that's the thing you build after a shrine, I guess. What does National College give? Does that give any great, library, great, great people points or not? Uh, great Library does. It gives you great scientist points. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So that's... that's uh, one of the Should main reasons why you want to get that as well. Well, I think the Great Library is a strategy. We can talk about the Great Library strategy in a different video, if you like. It's just, yeah, it's very yeah, it's very different. Yeah, I think that for example, um, this I think this this strategy that you said is is like the the best kind of all round gets you into a good place. It's my standard strategy to get you to this place. Right. I didn't have to go hanging gardens. If no, it, it just it just happened that to be way that you could. You know, yeah. it just turned out that way, and I think that you have to sometimes roll with the things you get given to some extent um, and make decisions based on that. This is a, a fairly easy thing to do, though. You usually start with enough city locations to get four cities down. Something so wrong. <laughs> Something oh, wrong. No. What? What's wrong? So I went for Delhi Katessen. Delhi Katessen. <laughs> <laughs> 